Coming up, we're talking rumors. Good rumors, bad rumors, not quite rumors, potentially the truth. We're talking all of those. Also, we have our dining review of the Bayliner Diner at Cabana Bay Beach Resort. So, live from the Bob Varley studio, this is the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. This is episode 42 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Edition. Your edition. My edition. <laughs> the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams. And I am joined uh, with some other people, most notably, well, not most notably, but also <laughs> notably, uh, Rhino Clavin. Hello. Ryan, Rhino Clavin. Hello. One more. Hello. Okay. Uh, also, on my other side, if this was the wide shot, but it's not, it doesn't matter if you're listening to audio anyways, I've got Jenny Lynn. Hey, everybody. Fantastic. And then back on the controls this week, producer Dustin West. I am also here. Just in the back, but also here. So, uh, yeah, we've got a, uh, and we got an episode. It's not a huge <laughs> one. It might not be a good one, but it is an episode nonetheless. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of things happened this past week, I think. Um, we're going to make it seem like things happened, at least. So, that, that's not bad. Uh, but... Um, oh, I don't know. Should we do housekeeping at the beginning or the end? I guess it's, it's since starting we were to just weigh on right now. About it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll bring it up now. Uh I mean, the first housekeeping we have to get to is I know the title of this episode is Rumors and the Bayliner Diner Review, but we are not talking about Rumors as in Fleetwood Mac, no. the you very popular album, oh, which is a shame way. sort of. Yeah. I mean, we could, but it has nothing to do with Universal Orlando. Uh as far as I know, I don't believe another shame. I don't believe uh, Lindsey Buckingham or Stevie Nicks or Mick Fleetwood himself have ever come and played at Universal. But if they do, then maybe we can cover that on a later episode. Uh, but so. for now, we will go on to housekeeping, and I surprisingly don't have any important housekeeping that needs to get off off my chest right now. But I believe Rhino may have some housekeeping. I do. Yeah. So after our last episode, um, we got an email from uh, Stephen. Remolino, I want to say. A is one Steve. It's got two L's. I never know if that's a high sound or a hard L. But So anyway, Stephen, Stephen sent me an email about, um, he was saying that I had said something along the lines that no one had seen dinosaurs portrayed on screen before Jurassic Park. And he, I'm just going to read this section of his email. He said, as a film student, I hope you're familiar with the amazing dinosaurs created by Willis O'Brien in The Lost World, in King Kong, Ray Harrison, Harry Hauser in, in One Million Years B.C., in the Valley of... Gwangi, I want to say, as well as Jim Danforth's Oscar-nominated effects in When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth. Um, he said, for those in my age group, those films were our Jurassic Park. And um, I should correct how I said it, because I am familiar with all those movies, even though I mispronounced that one. And when I, w I almost brought up a movie I watched a lot when I was a kid called Baby, that was also about a dinosaur. It was starring um, mm. Steve Gutenberg and mm. another person. Uh, but uh, that... That also, for me, was like a big dinosaur movie when I was a kid. But I meant like Jurassic Park was like the culmination of all of this. So those movies are fantastic. And, and what's fun to note is if you can get a hold of a Jurassic Park Blu-ray, there's a really awesome making of when Steven Spielberg chose to do the dinosaurs using CGI and the animatronics as opposed to doing the um, stop motion like he was going to do. And there's a really cool reel where they show the T-Rex yeah. in stop motion. And he said he still thought, as as awesome as it looked, it still looked fake. So um, that's what I appreciated this email, though. I like always getting into a good film film conversation hmm. with people. So I just wanted to say to Steven, I apologize for the way I said it. I'm glad that you called me out on that. And, uh, you know, hope to hear from you again. I don't know. That's it. Nothing. The big, should I, do I, I don't want to talk about it. No, well, no, no! I, was I don't just, acknowledge you trolls were, unless oh, answering okay. riddles on a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just I'll shut the flip up here for a second. <laughs> you go right ahead. <laughs> um, yes, Jeezum. 
<laughs> okay, so JL, do we have any housekeeping coming from you? No, none whatsoever. No, none whatsoever? I mean, I guess, I don't know if you want to mention the blog post about the family guides for families uh, that are, yes, was that a yes? Is that's that that's an absolutely go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, so on the blog, uh, we've started a new series called The Family Guide to Universal. And um, basically what's going on is I'm taking my kids there every week and we go on a ride in. We're reviewing it. So uh, when we get back, I get the, um, the opinions of my kids who are 15, 13, and 10. So you got the high schooler, the middle schooler, and the grade schooler. And they all have different personalities. Some of them are afraid of rides and some of them are not so afraid of rides, blah, blah, blah. And um, so anyway, for families out there that are curious about Universal, thinking about um, making a trip there, especially for the first time, and you kind of want to know what's there, maybe get an idea of how your kids will react. These are some cool blog posts you might be interested in reading. I have a question about these blog posts, too. Okay. So what's going to happen when the 10-year-old, or, or any one of them, I shouldn't say the youngest one, but you get to a ride that they don't all want to do together? Are you, are you, like, forcing them to be brave, or... Yes, I am. Um, well, and they kind of understand... <laughs> I, am, <laughs> I, am, I am that mother that is making my kids go on these rides. Um, luckily, the 10-year-old is the one that is gung-ho about everything. Her favorite ride is Rip Ride Rocket. What? The 15-year-old is the one that's chicken, and who I have to use measures like bribing and such to go on the more... Have you done? You haven't reviewed rides. Rip Ride Rocket yet, though, right? I have not, and my 15-year-old has never written it because she's never Ooh. been willing to do it before. So, um, but she is. She knows she's that day is coming. I'm she's curious gonna what the going to be to get her on. We will one. see. We will see how it goes. And if you guys want to know how it goes, then keep up with that blog series. You can find it at universal.wdwinfo.com. There'll be one going up every week. Yeah. Uh, usually on Wednesdays for the most part, they're fantastic blogs. You've been doing a out, out of this world job on them. I think it actually does show off a nice range of every single person in your family, essentially. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, because it is every person in your family, but in the typical family, everyone's personality almost comes out of it in those posts. So I think for yeah. anyone who is very unfamiliar, thinks that Universal's all just thrill rides. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there are a lot, but even then, it's good for different levels. So I think they're absolutely wonderful blogs for Thank that. You. So everyone, I urge you to go out and actually read them. And uh, Yeah, so far we, I guess it was last week, we posted Revenge of the Mummy. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday posted Men in Black, Alien yep. Attack. Next week will be uh, Bill Dratt Barges. Yep. Popeye and Bluto. So, uh, no, they're they're absolutely wonderful. Keep an eye out for them. They'll also be in the show notes. And, of course, the show notes are found at, I, I forget. It's right there. Oh, disunplugged.com. Yes, that's where, where else our show notes are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll, you'll go on disunplugged.com and uh, find the blue universal icon, and that's where that. And I'll get to more of that housekeeping. See, Rhino, I thought you were going to ask JL what happens once, like, her 10-year-old uh, moves out of that range and then into tweendom and we lose that demographic. She has what to, happens uh, then? then I she have to, to give birth again and Yeah, she has to birth a new new being. Yeah. That's something. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. I said being too. Uh, I, didn't <laughs> I mean, that, that was just a random thought. So if anyone else has any opinions, be sure to uh, send us an email at uopodcast at disunplug.com. Thoughts on JL birthing another child or thoughts on what? <laughs> just period in general? Oh, Let's well, go in ahead. In general. <laughs> We're going to say in general. Um, don't want to get things a little too graphic. So <laughs> with that, we don't really necessarily have a, a buzz episode for you. That was kind of last week that we did that. But we are going to talk about some of the rumors that have been popping up real, real briefly this week. Um, and by rumors, some of them have a little bit more weight than others, and uh, mm -hmm. but we're, we're just going to jump in. And the first one I'm going to go with, uh, because it's one of the first things we talked about on our first show that we ever did coming back this year, and that was uh, the Garden of Allah, that whole area, oh, yeah. and what the developments are. And of course, way back when, we expressed our wishes that it would hopefully become a, a museum, universal right? yeah. type museum where you could relive universal orlando history the past the present potentially the future all that this that and above and i know the future the, the future i know a lot of people uh have been really hoping that that would be 
a solution for that space because it is a perfect area for it in my opinion and right now we're still not quite sure i mean there are definitely uh leads to where it's going to be so on one of the uh, construction permits a while back that was filed something on the permit led it to believe that it would be an nbc universal media lab so do you ask what 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 on earth is a media lab i'm not really sure what that is so from what i understand the comcast nbc universal media lab is a department up in new jersey from what I know, that is basically a test center almost for everything that NBC Universal and Comcast is working out. So employees can go and check out like what is actually happening with some of the latest and greatest so things like- happening with the entire company wide spectrum. And so the way I would take that into be if is if something like this was coming to uh, Universal Orlando. Would this be an exclusive area only for people that work for the company in the same similar sense as like at Epcot? You have the people who sponsor the pavilions like Chevrolet or back when it was GM. And I know GM employees can still get up into test track and they can all yeah. use their exclusive lounge up there. Yep. Could oh, this be? A, that's cool. Oh, and there's mm-hmm. one in Living Seas, Mission, Bishop Earth, Siemens. There's one in all of them. Yeah, there's pavilions. one in all of them. Mission Space has the HP yeah, one. It's Siemens. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. No, they're all cool. So they're maritime sailors. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, stories. Uh, so yeah. So that was kind of the inkling of it's going to turn into this this media uh, type facility. And then earlier this week, it was it kind of made its rounds on Twitter. And then actually, one of our uh, one of our ingesters. Yeah. Our listener I or a view. I don't know if he's a listener or a viewer. He didn't say what he was, but he definitely ingests our show. You could say consumer, and I'd be much no. happier. Yeah, I'd feel <laughs> much more comfortable. Uh, I'll let the uh, I'll let iTunes to decide if ingester is a bad word or not. When he looks at but, his, uh, oh no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to say it's so. Anthony H. He actually sent us a video of uh, something or a picture of what I've already seen before, and I'm sorry I didn't have time to plug it in and i didn't want to use anyone else's picture without getting permission so i will make sure it's in the show notes page with credit to anthony but uh outside the gardens of allah buildings on one of the buildings uh you can now see the nbc uh peacock logo and then right below it says media center okay so that would start to lead the idea that maybe this is actually happening with that but then another person on Twitter, and I believe it was reported on by Theme Park News. There's so many people out there uh, that someone also noticed backstage in that same area where there was a wait time sign as well as an express sign and a standby sign. So now that adds on another confusing level to is this going to be something exclusively for employees to come and hang out as a center like that or is this going to be like a media center experience where you get to see the stuff they're working on and why would they expect people to ever have to wait in line for this we're getting an express pass what's the yeah. name of the thing in in uh, california that we did that had like the delorean in it that was the nbc universal experience, experience. Right? yes because that's what that's what i would think that this might be but i mean You'd be I wrong. Guess not. Yeah, and I mean, there's no sign that this has anything to do with Universal there, though. This is clearly an NBC media center. So, well, let me ask you this: does the does Universal Orlando have any of those types of things, like uh, employee type lounges or company lounges like that, to begin with, um, at all? N- no, there are ones that there are lounges that they use for employees for work functions stuff that they need for what i said for like break rooms uh no i mean everyone has their own break room yeah everyone has their own break room but they do have ones if they need like a private party something like that they have them available to use uh they all they do also have like the um the american express lounges Mm, if you're an american express holder and uh if you buy your tickets all that way you get all those extra perks and a perk is also being able to use the american express lounge and sometimes Hmm. for like the holiday parade they do american express uh reserve viewing spots so 
as far as I know, they have that, but I've never heard of a specific Comcast Universal specialty section. If that ever happened, that just went way over my head. And I mean, for the average park guest, it wouldn't matter. But with this being such a prevalent section of the park uh, in that Hollywood section, especially a lot of people used it as a nice shortcut into Kid Zone mm-hmm. without walking all the way around. Uh, it's a big deal, whatever goes in there, if there's if it's cutting off access to to shortcuts and all that. So still no idea what's going to happen, but I, I hope at the end of the day it's something for all guests to enjoy yeah, and not just a select group. I mean... If you're a Comcast employee, you're already rolling in dough. You don't need a special <laughs> little center. Your to... movie just made a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, you, you've had two of the biggest movies of the year so far. Just soak that in a little bit. But yeah. thank you, Anthony, for sending that picture. I will make sure to post it along with your name, your address, and your blood type, just <laughs> in case. Thanks, Anthony. Just in case we want a Mad Max situation going on here. I still haven't seen it. No spoilers. It's, it's, in, the, it's in the first no, 30 seconds. No spoilers. No spoilers. So that will take us into the next rumor with a question mark. Uh, This one is not so much of a rumor because, again, permits and uh, some LinkedIn accounts have led us to to know more and more about this. So Project 727, uh, this project has long been rumored based on everything uh, people have been digging up on the Internet is that this will be the new attraction taking over twister as we've speculated on it before from wild brain ideas that were never going to happen like a sharknado attraction to Mm -hmm. the uh, jimmy fallon nbc experience that is more likely to happen and probably will happen and uh i I know i just wanted a digital version of ian zaring you know doing his whole sharknado thing i don't see i don't need that i don't i also don't need jimmy fallon i yeah I've been well on the record saying I think he can be funny, but in terms of him on an average day, I don't find him enjoyable that much. Yeah. Uh, Did you enjoy him in Jurassic World? Yes and no. I thought it was a good cameo. It was a perfect cameo considering his uh, his inclusion to the Universal Hollywood tram tour. So it yeah. felt perfect, but at the same time, they went too over the top goofy. <laughs> yeah, uh they did. But I mean that's such a it's such a goofy movie to begin with that and not the goofy movie but a goofy movie not a goofy movie well, but the, yeah. you the whole, know the whole point a, of this is that a giggly <laughs> movie <laughs> we're hoping that it's not going to be Jimmy Fallon so the fact that you're not happy with yeah. that means this is a good thing but it is going to be Jimmy Fallon and it, it's uh, it's going to have brand new technology no. in it. And someone also, I'm finding this via uh, the good people over at Parkscope, but they found uh, a project director of the name Donald McLean is going to be attached to Project 727. Uh, and he was also in charge of some of the planning for Universal Moscow that still hasn't happened. But the fact that someone of that stature is being put onto this new project, it means there's some serious gravitas behind it yeah it's it's not just going to be your uh, your standard run-of-the-mill attraction anymore but at the same time our friend shane also explained to us how difficult it would be to actually do interior construction yeah inside there so maybe they just need their best people on it because it's not going to be this easygoing building renovation like they have sometimes uh but the point is uh it looks like twister is going to be on its way out some people are rumoring that it could be this month up until potentially whenever uh, they start needing the queue for halloween horror nights that's whenever they're just going to pull the plug on it but i would urge everyone to get over and experience twister while they still can before it is extinct it is the best ride at universal before it is not a ride before it is turned into a category zero Uh, what what would that be on the Fujita scale? The Fujita scale. I'm trying to think of a clever line from that movie to use right now. I'm too wrapped up in the film right now. Well, hell or not. I don't know. I'm we'll get it. Keep yeah. keep it simmering on the back burner. Like that steak uh, and eggs that that old lady made for them. Uh, in, Wh- in Wichita, Kansas? Uh-huh. If it's got to be a dusty line from it, then that's also fine. God rest his soul. Rest his soul. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. One of his best roles ever. And yeah. Cameron from, uh, from yeah. uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Exactly. That's and right. also Spin City. 
Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, no, it's it's a lot of great people in Twister. So <laughs> uh, I like that movie still. Yeah, I it's. Uh, I mean, it holds up for me. Watch and, the film and then experience the ride. And in, enjoy Carrie Elwes. Yeah. Elwes. Who gets a fitting end in yeah, the, the film guy. as well. Uh, and then after you're done with that, of course, we've got to do our weekly plug to Congo. Get out there and watch Congo. It's uh, Netflix numbers are rising. You know rising. what would go great with watching Congo? Just what? a good, nice big helping of sesame cake. <laughs> sesame cake. I can't do this every week. Yep, I can't every week. Doing it's, Stop it's, eating my sesame cake. It's become a thing. I'm we'll going to buy us a sesame cake we'll either so lose, yelling at people. We're either going to lose ingesters over it or we're going to gain some. I, need I don't pictures. know what's going to happen. I need, but I need like a t-shirt now with my face and sash, sesame cake. And I'm like, satches, ingesters, and sesame cake. That's all Okay. Awesome, because we never got onto that last week with the Jurassic World uh, buzz show. So before we get to our final rumor, we have to also bring that up about the Absatch appearance in Jurassic World. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It was a nice leather Absatch, too. It was a nice leather Absatch that carried around matches. Nothing much else but matches. Yeah, how they let that kid in that park in the jungle with matches is beyond me. Like Nobody checked his bag. Nobody's like, sir, you don't need matches here. And if that just ruins something for you at this point... My God, Jurassic World has been out for almost two weeks. Uh, over a billion dollars worth of people have seen it. If you haven't seen it yet. I'm going to be honest with you, too. That match scene stood out for just a second. It's it's so irrelevant. It's just he says, do you still have those matches? So it and leads me to believe random. there's a deleted scene oh, yeah. where they get the matches from one of the restaurants. I'm pretty sure those re- those matches they use are from a restaurant on their city walk or whatever they call it. Jurassic Walk. Oh. I don't know what you call it. Downtown. I didn't see downtown any Dino? matches at Margaritaville the last time I was there, but <laughs> downtown Dino Town. <laughs> yeah, downtown Dino Town. Downtown Dino Town. All right, let's but yes, everyone, go. we did see the Absatch. We know about the Absatch. Guys, check out my Twitter. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the Absatch store I saw while I was in Puerto Rico. I took a picture of it. I'm waiting <laughs> waiting for the appropriate time to reveal it. Fantastic. <laughs> so our third and final one uh, this past week. Was the brand o- brand brand the opening brand the brand the grand opening. opening of the brand? There we go. I pulled it back around. Right. Uh, right. The brand right. new Fast and Furious Supercharged at Universal Studios Hollywood, and uh, it was a big star-studded appearance. Something that none of us were there for uh, because we live in Orlando, and uh, we we you although we do people. dabble in Universal Studios Hollywood, have you seen on this show and yeah. other shows? Uh, we don't have a full-time person to be running around to events there so we weren't a part of it but other people were a part of it uh including universal studios hollywood and uh they were periscoping some of it and michelle rodriguez started talking and i we were doing our tuesday disney world show at the current time that this was happening so i wasn't paying attention but apparently just right during an interview she started rambling on about how Fast and Furious was coming to Orlando and the Beijing parks with, mm. as to this point, no actual announcement that this was ever going to happen. It was a Oops. slip of the tongue. A slip of the tongue. A bad slip of the tongue. Um, Michelle Rodriguez. She can just not keep her act together. So, Poor young lady. and this, this I wanted to bring it around into several ways because, A, Fast and Furious, as we already even mentioned on this show, not by name, but by association, that it was... Universal second biggest movie of this year mm. uh, a very whopping phenomenal success people are in love with the Fast and Furious franchise and I don't think there's enough doctors out there in the world to try to figure out why people like <laughs> Fast and Furious but one day there will be I'm sure I mean I know The Rock everyone loves The Rock and Vin Diesel he could act his way out of shoebox I'm sure yeah. but <laughs> a uh, deep voice as he does it I'm in the shoebox. I can't even do it. I mean, give me a pack of cigarettes and I'll try again. <laughs> okay, we'll be back with that in minutes. Uh, <laughs> was Paul Walker in this one, or was, is this this was, yeah, this last, is his last, this was one. His last okay, one? I couldn't. I'm, I think I, that also I gave it a little, clearly not seen yeah. little boost. So, the ride opens up in Universal Studios Hollywood, and as part of the Studio Tram Tour, and you would think that it wouldn't be hard to make this very successful because. I mean, we did the studio tram tour. Dustin's done it in the past. Uh, everything on the tram tour is pretty phenomenal yeah. as far as it goes. Kong 360, mm-hmm. the Amity Jaws section, the Psycho section, uh, going back to Earthquake. 
the pe- jumping out and peeing wherever yeah. you want section. Yeah, ladies. I think that was just special on, on our tour. War of the Worlds part was exactly. amazing. I I actually think that was like. I, I told you when I met Thor. If anyone doesn't know, I met Thor when I was. We all know about it. But um, keep going. I he asked me like, what was the what was your favorite thing you've done on this trip so far? And my first knee jerk reaction was, the Universal Tram Tour. And I was like, oh, I'm at Disneyland. (laughs) I can't say that. So it stuck with me. That one stuck with me the most. And it's nice to add on another section, extend the tour time just a little bit. Uh, But I, I know I told JL. To maybe watch the video, Which did you I end did. up watching I it? Did. Have I did. you watched video of Supercharged yet? I didn't know there. Wa- I didn't know we had a video yet. We we don't have a video, but other people do that live out there. Oh, I haven't. No, I haven't looked it up. And yet. I have a very strong opinion about it. I don't. Were you left impressed? I want to know by the no, video. I wasn't. Up or down? I wasn't no. at all. It didn't impress me at all. I kind of was like, uh, "This is sort of boring." It was it awful. like was it like Kong yeah, 360 it, where you do the, was, the dome? Yeah. Yeah. Well. It starts off and your tram pulls in and there's it's there's this party going on and lots of girls like yeah like a big street party girls. with yeah. like cars and stuff heels well, and short shorts and bikini tops Michael Bay's wet and, dream yeah uh, they're doing the same Christopher Walken projection match from uh, from Disaster and that's who, who, how who's the Christopher Walken in this the girls it, it's oh all, that's it's how a they're whole doing bunch the of girls. characters okay. yeah they're doing that technology it's not just like a flat screen movie it okay. starts out as that with an actual set so it's all three dimensionally yeah then mm-hmm. vin diesel walks in and uh, 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 you know just the garbage that he spits out <laughs> and so that's the first part of it and yeah this then, like big huge semi truck rises up out of the ground and he makes a big speech and then it goes exactly back. yeah then it goes it, back down and tay diggs isn't tay diggs is the one in that right or no tyrese no it's not tyrese it's tyrese, tyrese. Yeah. tyrese. sorry tay diggs careful wow. sorry tay wow. uh tyrese <laughs> wow t t t gibbs they are both muscular bald men so i i guess <laughs> So <laughs> in your terrible way. Just moving on. I just don't know. I don't watch these movies. He clearly hasn't They're watched awful. a transforming I've watched, movie either. I have a problem with Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Gosling. So I've <gasps> watched The Fast and the Furious. I've, and I've seen the first one, a, the second one, and the sixth one. I've only seen the first one. That's all I've watched from it. So then from there, then it goes into the brand new giant screens that now unlike uh unlike Kong, where it's Kong three sixty, but it's not really three sixty. It's just 180 yeah it's kind of on both sides yeah this one actually is all the way around i mean it's so you're enveloped if you're looking straight forward the screen comes down in front of the tram too nice so in in front of the driver or like in between in in front of the driver too it's complete wrap so but then it's all cg it's not like real life they didn't like it's all like cg cars it looks it's it almost looks like a video game I know, just it's, I don't, I, I don't know. I was like that little, one with the hookers little, in the cars. I was a little bored. Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, there it is. I was like, I thought it would come to me as before I said that word, but oh, well, I said hooker. Sorry, it's not a bad I don't, word. I mm-hmm. don't think there's a problem with it, but it just for the amount of time and attention they put into this attraction uh, as part of the train tour, it really fell flat, and that's been the general consensus from people who have actually 3D glasses experienced too? this. Yes, 3D yeah. glasses. Put on your 3D glasses, and huh. uh, so that's a shame they didn't actually film it. Like they yeah. film all the stunts from all the movies. Well, the good news is if we get a Fast and Furious attraction, it'll be the in Orlando. Errors. They're not going to they're not going to replicate this. It's going to have to be something else, uh, just because. That's it's such a short part of the tram tour. That's why we don't have a Kong 360. We have have our brand new experience. Uh, But even though she spilled the beans on it, and it's such a valuable franchise, after doing a flop ride out of it, is it a smart decision to still try to bring it over, anyways? Uh, I think. I mean, if it's done right, maybe. I don't know though. I I don't want to see something like that. I don't want to. If it's CG, that's that's my issue mm. with the Simpsons ride. Is like I liked it better when it was Back to the Future because it was real people, real stuff, you know, and then some CG in there too. But the, but then when it was the Simpsons, the cartoon aspect of it, like my mind disconnects, so it makes me more nauseous that way. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Um, so I worry that if they're going to do a projected thing like that, then it's going to have that effect too. I don't yep. know. I. I mean, I'll I'll wait to 
reserve my full, full judgment once we are there and get to experience the next time uh, we have that opportunity. But it really makes me nervous if they're trying to bring over this franchise well, into our parks now. They haven't flopped anything yet. I was, We were nervous about... what. Is there something we've been nervous about? No, I'm like, maybe not. Oh, you're um, nervous but, about everything. I mean, Diagon Alley was amazing. Transformers was ama- is It's very well done for just the little square it is. Despicable like the, Me was a big hit. The, yeah, just, they did a good job with Despicable Me. And then the Simpsons area. I still, every time I go in there, I'll talk about the Simpsons area. Yeah, but, like, so my hope is or Universal Florida is going to be the, like, here's the best place. Here's the gem that we made. You know, here's the diamond. Well, Everyone always hits a road bump at some point in time. Yeah. No one can be perfect all I the time. I just hope if they do something, it's not going to be computer simulated. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of over that. Hopefully. I mean, one of, one of the other things to take away, too, about all this rumor talk before we move on and get out of all this is just... I was thinking about it on the car ride over to our meeting today where we could uh, record this show. And that's it. We know Kong is coming, mm-hmm. obviously. But other than that everything seems to be taking place over in the studios right now which is great because that park needed a boost oh, yeah. but i already feel like studios has now completely overtaken islands of adventure and if you want to have a nice long day at the theme park which one are you going to go to I'd studios, go to studios by yeah. far and i mean obviously that transpired too through those attendance numbers that we saw with the TN number. Yeah. And that's a real turnaround from what it was a couple of years yeah. ago. Yeah. I think especially with the original Harry Potter section, mm-hmm. you would have said islands yeah. two or three years ago. Yeah, no exactly. hesitation about it either. So when do we stop dumping money in Universal Studios Florida and balance it back start out. balancing it back out? Do we have the space? I think Kong's going to be a big thing for that, though. I think that's going to be... I mean, I know we, it's already in the making, and it's going to draw a lot of people in, but I think that'll... Maybe that's just step one now. You know, yeah. like Because Transformers... Would you say like Transformers was our step one, or like the Simpsons Land or something like that? I guess it's not a land, but... I, one of the two of those was the first one that we got, and then it started bringing first. it up. Yeah, then maybe this is just the beginning of their transformation there no because i went to the springfield well the ride was open for years before the yeah but springfield itself with the restaurants either way well do we have space at islands of adventure is it going to have to be in order to get things over there they have to demolish what's there in order to put up something new but lost continent needs to go completely yeah it's there's nothing it's over and done and i suggested it on the last show i believe pave the the fountain they don't do any or the lake in the middle they don't do anything with it anymore drain it pave it make it one of the most massive theme parks probably it would end up being potentially one of the bigger parks in orlando if they did that yeah i i, I say go for it but it doesn't have a purpose anymore yeah. but yeah if they did a nighttime show or if they still had the boats that ran great but they don't but they don't so uh we are going to even though that ended up turning into pretty much a buzz session uh we're gonna just do a quick mid-show shuffle because i wanted to talk about it yeah but without your crap there it's not even a mid-show shuffle i'm changing my mind it's not a mid it's, it's not a mid-show it's shuffle. too late we've it's already not. shuffled stop shuffling uh so right now you Every can uh, i hate myself i hate you too i hate you <laughs> We all hate you. Well, so, I know a lot of people do. Right now, you can win a free three-night vacation to Universal Orlando if Ooh. you take part in their uh, Universal Moments timeline. So if you've seen a Universal commercial lately, you've probably seen the hashtag Universal, Universal Moments. Moments. And Ooh. stop shuffling and stop <laughs> eating my sesame cake. Stop <laughs> eating my sesame cake. Uh, and... So that's the big thing that's happening with Universal Marketing right now. And uh, as part of the 25th anniversary, they decided to give away 25 free trips uh, and pretty phenomenal trips because not only is it the three nights at, from what I could read in the rules and guidelines, it's any of the hotels. It's not specifically Cabana Bay. It's it's any of them, whatever you choose, whatever is available, plus three-day park-to-bark passes, unlimited express, and then also they're throwing in free airfare oh, with transportation nice. if nice. you are chosen. So how do you do this? You go to moments.universalorlando.com. Go to their timeline section. It'll give you a place to add photos uh, where, of course, if you're over 18, then you're allowed to add photos and you're automatically entered in the contest. Or as I wrote in the, uh, the news story about it, if you are afraid of photographic power of stealing souls, uh, 
because there are people out there who do believe that, uh, then you can also and do mail in entries. So respectfully. It is. So I just wanted to briefly mention it before we move into our review because, I mean, a lot of people would love a free vacation and it's a fun way because <laughs> once everyone adds into this timeline, which it, it covers each year, you can upload a photo for it. So if you have pictures from 1990 or yeah. 1992 that, you know, we don't really see those photos anymore. If you have those, scan them, upload them, it becomes part of the timeline. And then all of a sudden, that's anyone can see that, see the park from that time period. I've got some it's, Ghostbuster stuff. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So, the show. Specifically and they, you can do this every single day, right? Yeah, you can do it do once a, a day. new entry once a day. And mm-hmm. it ends July 31st. So I will have a link to that blog post so you can read more about it in the show notes page, disonblog.com. And uh, that's where you'll find all the information on it. And uh, do that all on your own if you're eligible to enter. You might as well. That's a good cause. Is, is there like a restriction where like I could probably enter because I'm not related to anybody that works at Universal or NBC or Comcast yeah. or whatever? But no, you can. one per household. No, he's yeah, asking I, if there's oh, restrictions on people who work yeah, for the no, park. It's, and it's a standard contest. If but could you? I'm saying like, can you do this entry? No, I can't. Okay. No. I'm not eligible to win. Okay. It would be the same okay. way. You're not eligible blah, 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 for a Disney, for a Disney one. one. Yeah. Okay. So let. Let's cut the crap and let's crap. let's cut the garbage and let's move into what these people came here to hear about. Well, they didn't really know what was happening on the show anyway, <laughs> so they didn't necessarily come here to hear about this, but they're going to hear about it. It's what's important. Uh, and it is our dining review of Bayliner Diner. Food. The, the quintessential dining experience at Cabana Bay Beach Resort. Mm-hmm. So... Let's get into the jiggly with it. What? Where did that? <laughs> well, you know, let's let's get into the fat with it. Let's Just get Scooby into the jiggly. Laughter. I don't know why I said that. That was get kind jiggy of with it. No, 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 amazing no, 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 no. and a very Wait, weird level. Like you know, no, no, keep no, no, adding no, no, no. it to the uh, Craig only <laughs> dictionary. We need we need to take note the of these. We need like a Google document with these things listed on them. It's awful. He's just a regular Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you are at Cabana Bay Beach Resort, maybe not necessarily staying there, but just going over. If you are staying there, that's great, too. You have lots of dining options, in my opinion. All of them are mm-hmm. kind of quick service, in a sense. So, Bayliner Diner is the one we're talking about, uh, and that is the... the The main place to eat at you. Cabana Bay. Yes. It's a food court. Yeah. Quick service... But it's got six different stations and, um, yeah, lots of different options. It's all You can get kind of whatever you are in the mood for there. And then in addition to that, it's got the um, little side place where you can get snacks and s'mores kits. and Exactly. So, yeah, Bayliner Diner obviously falls into the same level as the rest of the resort. And it's that late 50s, early 60s uh that whole theme and attitude of it obviously uh, there wasn't a lot of necessarily uh motels that had giant food courts like this back mm-hmm. in that day but it keeps that motif that's moving around it uh, does i i know of, oftentimes mad men get dropped in when talking about cabana bay because universal creative even admitted that that was part of it you also referenced another uh, form of media in your review that you uh, wrote that I really yeah. liked. Okay, so I, I mentioned remember. a couple of them. Um, the first one was it always, Cabana Bay always reminds me of Catch Me If You Can. That's it, yeah. Uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio and specifically there's a scene in the movie, he's in Atlanta, Georgia, although I think Cabana Bay leans more towards South Florida, Miami. Um, mm-hmm. But there's like a little party scene before Car- Carl Hanready comes into um, oh, it's no, it's before he becomes a doctor. Anyway, that none of that matters. Um, there's a party scene, and people are like at the pool and they're lounging and they're throwing beach balls around, and uh, British invasion music's playing. And I always, uh, I don't know, I just kind of feel like it's got that vibe. Yeah. No, that I Elvis absolutely beach agree. Beach movie with Angela Lansbury, Blue Hawaii. Yeah. Mm. That's what. Well, I don't know if I'm in the right realm. That's what the that's what the pool area reminded me. That was actually mm. on opening night of the Cabana Bay Courtyard area. Whenever the hotel first up, that was the dive-in movie that they showed oh. that night. <laughs> so nice. I guess I'm not far. So, off. Like, 
But that's neither here nor there because we're going back to Bayliner Diner. So that gives you an idea of the feel of the hotel if you still haven't got it yet. And you're going to be out. getting to know more about that hotel even sooner coming up here because uh, we're about ready to start releasing our Universal Land Sea wink, wink, nudge, nudge. stuff. Uh, so maybe, maybe not. I don't know the actual date. <laughs> I guess I can't really tease it if I don't know the date. It's, it's but happening TBD, soon. guys. It's TBD. coming. TBD. Yeah. Well, no, it's already determined. I just don't have the exact date that it starts. TBA. So, guys. right in front of us. Going back to the atmosphere of it, yes, I think one you. of the things is, um, I think that helps it along is it's got these huge uh, TV screens on the upper level of the, the food court area where you're sitting. And it's just, it plays all these nostalgic advertisements. And I even love a those. few, I, they're, they're really kind of cute. I just sat, sat and, like, and stare uh, at them the whole time. <laughs> Uh, fascinating, especially what, the way that women are portrayed. Um, the potato chip commercial was my favorite because it was like potato chips were new yeah. and nobody knew what they were. So the commercial like <laughs> explains what they are. And then it's like, how do you eat them? <laughs> it's just this really funny commercial. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that whole seating area is just really cool to mind blowingly big. Uh, there's it's no photo that can really do that entire mm -hmm. area justice. And I know that's a big problem with a lot of these hotels that have food court style restaurants because, you know, it's busy and crowded where everyone's getting their food. And then all of a sudden you go to find a seat. You can't find a seat for the whole family. Mm -hmm. Everyone has to start splitting up. There's crap left on all the tables. You're not going to have that problem here. No, no way at all. So let's, uh, let's talk about the cleanliness of the area. So half, I would say for most of the day, unless we're talking summer peak, and this hotel is busy all the time, half of the entire eating area will be closed off. Mm. So they'll only have like the upper section open and then they'll have the lower section roped off. So that way, you know, for dinner service, then they can open that up and then clean the entire area. So they keep this process. Uh, they keep it going very well. Also, uh, even though they urge you to bring your food and trays up, they do have roamers walking around collecting collecting your food with you and putting it away uh which is a very very nice touch something that, that is, doesn't need to happen but. you know and i i learned occasionally they'll come and clear your table if they see that you're done and you're just yeah. sitting there they don't even you know they don't even necessarily wait for you to get up and it's just it's kind of cool it adds that nice touch of this isn't necessarily your normal food court. This is almost bordering into a table service. Yeah. And another thing that also really uh, takes that over the edge is for dinner service, not for lunch or breakfast, but for dinner service, they have real metal silverware that mm. you can actually use, mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't sound like much, but unless you've gone to uh, Disney and you're trying to cut open a kibasi with, <laughs> with a, plastic a plastic fork and knife and I then it kielbasa. melts and bends and I mean this this is something that happens all the time it just there's some meals you cannot eat with plastic yeah. materials they got a steak with it <laughs> well in the, I mean whenever we get to the food that's that was part of my complaint with mine is that I couldn't really cut it with the plastic uh, so uh, yeah <laughs> Actual silverware. Very, very nice touch. Uh, mm -hmm. I think something that's also pretty cool is the freestyle Coke machines. Yep. Which is not necessarily common in quick services. Yep. Um, they also have the um, the slushy machine. Yes. And they're for ices, which I love. I think that's so exciting. Mm -hmm. Can you do that in your freestyle cup? Well, mm -hmm. they don't have a freestyle cup per se, but they do have the... Uh, the, the cups, the yeah, there's souvenir the mug there that's themed ones. like the giant mural at the back of the Bay Lighter Diner uh, Put it in there. food court area. They're awesome cups. I have, I have the Christmas one and I have the regular edition. That's how much I love the design on them. Uh, and so those can be used in the freestyle machines, and you buy them by the length of your trip so you can get a one day cup to use kind of like the system that disney just ditched and they went back to the pay one flat price oh, this good. is still this is still the it's cheaper if you buy it for one day but if you want a length of your stay one then you know it's only going to be like 14.99 i think is the price it's at now maybe 13.99 uh i should have researched that part but uh, either way, you can use those for the freestyle machines. You can also buy regular cups as you go if you just want a soda, but you can't use that in the freestyle. You can only use that in the fountains that they have there, but they have a nice selection in mm -hmm. the fountains too, so don't don't go getting your panties in a bunch. 
there's lots of options of course there's always the the healthiest option water what drink water every day hydrate guys it's florida eight and eight. Oh, eight, eight bottles eight, a day eight eight, well, eight eight cups oh eight cups <laughs> eight yeah. cups of eight ounces i will be drowning so uh do we have any other real things you already mentioned that the you can buy the s'mores kits there. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're doing the camp out late at night where they have the fires yeah, outside of each section. Open, is it yeah. two open fire pits in each of the courtyards, I believe. And yes. they're very popular in the evenings. You see, you know, grandmas and kids and parents It's a good place everybody. to bring the guitar and sing Kumbaya. Mm. I, when I, one night when I'll I was out there, the people, were, <laughs> <laughs> people were playing cards out there by the fire pit. I don't know. It's just a really cool experience. And, the, um, you know, of course, the s'mores were very popular. Yeah, no, that's the easiest way to get out of a bad hand. You just it's, throw it in the fire. You know what? It's also no, the, I fell in my cards. It's also the place where you can buy um, special dietary items. Yes. They have, like, the, the gluten-free snacks and um, little vegan things that you can buy. So if you have those needs... Um, Bayliner Diner, um, the the snack area is where you're going to find those. Yes. When I was filming that video, I ducked in and, ha- and got like a, it was a good trail mix, a banana, whatever, stuff on the go you can just grab. That, and it wasn't that expensive either. Yep. No, uh, pricing is very, very good. And uh, with that, we'll kind of actually get into the food aspect of it. Uh, we'll start back going over the general layout of it. There are six food stations, as you mentioned. There's one that has your burgers and chicken tenders and uh grill items and then there's a pizza pasta section there's a salad bar there's a healthy uh handmade sandwiches and wraps uh there's did i say the pizza section yes the pizza section already uh there's the foods from around the world section uh the pizza section or is there only five yeah i think there's six isn't there I, Salad I, I couldn't tell you. I was very like, there's so many options here. I, I was just so focused on the pizza section. There's a I, yeah. butt ton of options. <laughs> uh, and there's there's a lot of good stuff. So uh, they do a great job of blending comfort foods. Like your the 50s and 60s, really good comfort foods. Uh, the, the tuna noodle casserole, stuff like that. Your favorite. Along with more modern dishes items uh like the one dustin had which we will get to very shortly here and then also filling that gap as i said with the burgers and the fries because sometimes people just want a burger and you a want fry. your burgers and your fries they just want them so uh there's a great variety of options that you can choose from with quick stations and the prices are very good most of it for uh all day menu uh, because it's lunch and dinner, it's the same menu. They don't switch it out. Breakfast is a different one. Uh, the menu items can range anywhere from about eight dollars up into thirteen. So that's yeah. it's very good, very very good for uh, for a food court. Well, and some of the stuff they'll make right on the spot too, like the burger, the the thing I got, like yeah. that stuff. So that it just I like how fresh it is too. Yes. Like it, yeah, absolutely. That's that's a really good way to describe this. A lot of the stuff is made very fresh right in front of your eyes. So it adds that nice stamp of approval for it. And some of the things have a nostalgic feel to it, which I thought was interesting. That You brought the theming of the restaurant even to the food items that they um, make available. Uh, the one that I like the most is the crinkle cut fries. Well, cool. Let's Let's jump in. And start talking about the food. I believe we're going to go with mine first because I know I put my picture first. Um, I'll get me out of the way. Let's be honest. I've already talked enough. So I'll talk and then we can just move on for me. So I had the Brazilian beef. Churrasco. 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 Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is a uh, flat iron steak that's marinated, served with chimichurri, rice, and black beans. Um, so this has been something that I've always wanted to get at Cabana Bay at the Bayliner Diner. Um, the the one time I tried to get it before while I was there, it 
would have been like a 15 20 minute wait because i had to start cooking the beef fresh again and which is nice but i didn't want to wait 15 or 20 minutes when i'm ready to eat i'm ready to when eat when you want your beef you want to when i want ready. my beef i want my beef and this time i really wanted my beef this is i believe the most expensive item you can get there which is 13 uh portion size is fantastic uh you know there's there could probably be for a person of my size and stature for your listeners out there i'm fat uh <laughs> for those who are watching video you can see my double chin so it's pretty He's clear not that big. Uh, <laughs> that'll be the thumbnail that's not going to be the thumbnail no one will watch it uh <laughs> so uh yeah i i could have used more beef because i would rather have the protein than the two healthy scoops of rice and the black beans those are fantastic uh but overall and you got the chimichurri sauce yeah and the chimichurri sauce so how did i feel about mine well my beef was overcooked for my taste i asked for it rare and it it was not rare. it was well you had a beef with your beef yeah i had a beef with my beef (laughs) my my beef was well done and that's sad because i they know i asked for it that way and it just they dropped the ball and i was watching other people get theirs and it was cooked perfectly Uh, and every time i've been there i've seen it cooked perfectly to how people want it so that's why i've always wanted to try this uh mine was bad and then obviously by the time we got done taking pictures of all this crap then it was cold but that was my fault would you try to get it it quicker would you try to get it again or would you just say it was bad enough that you were like well and that's where you can i can save it because the chimichurri sauce had a great flavor it was slightly spicy uh not not overly spicy but i i would say that was that was the saving grace of the fact that the beef was not cooked well and it was very hard to cut with the knife that that had that nice chimichurri sauce with it and black beans and rice i i could eat that for every meal of the day i love black beans and rice so overall i would say my dish that i was served i wouldn't give it a good grade but if this dish is done well which i think is most of the time then uh, I, I would definitely recommend it for people to try. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then Pete was with us whenever we did this review. So I'm going to talk about his briefly, too. Sorry, I got your hopes up that I was going to stop talking, but I didn't. Uh, Pete got a classic tuna salad sandwich. Uh, you can't get much more uh, just easy going than a tuna salad sandwich. This one looked phenomenal. It was served on like a multi-grain croissant uh with nice spinach leaves inside and a little bit of tomatoes and then it came with a uh side of pasta salad and uh pete had to say about it that it was very good it was a little onion heavy um and but the whole wheat croissant had an extremely fresh taste as well as everything the pasta salad he said was absolutely amazing which it's yeah it looks amazing i am so hungry yeah Uh, my stomach's hurting me right now (laughs) Yeah, uh, Pete did say it was a little overpriced at eight ninety nine for it, but uh, it's other than that, he seemed to enjoy it. Good. So that's good. And uh, moving on to the next person's food items, I think it is. Well, it's a veggie burger. It's a veggie burger. Well, that must <laughs> mean it's our resident vegetarian. <laughs> Sometimes. Jenny Lynn, I was no. just going to say, she's the worst vegetarian. She'll go and order vegetarian sushi and then a double cheeseburger. <laughs> Our vegetarian. She's always fun Once to go to eat with. Keep you on your toes. <laughs> Drea, yeah, I do. So. I keep you on your toes. You never know what you're going to expect. Yeah. <laughs> what, you, what you're going to get with me. Um, this day, I ate ve- a vegan. And I had the vegetarian burger. And I thought that it was great. Um, so I eat vegetarian stuff a lot and in the theme parks i try to do that as well and normally vegetarian burgers in theme parks are the worst they're so bad the patties are just terrible they're bland sometimes taste like cardboard they're terrible this one did not taste like that at all i think there's a few reasons for that the uh, tomatoes that came on it the sun-dried tomatoes and um the the saucy thing it just what what kind of sauce was it again it was a pepper and aioli oh it was it was really it had good peppers on it and then an aioli sauce 
you know, I, it was the first time I've ever had a veggie burger in a theme park where I genuinely enjoyed it. And I would go back and eat that, like seek it out to eat it and want to eat it rather than feeling like I was eating it because I was trying to make a good choice. So um, vegetarians out there, I just I got some good news for you. There's a really good option there at Bayliner Diner for you. And then uh, crinkle cut fries. You could looks like you got a good portion there. It, I yes, I definitely was full by the end of it. So um, I'm not of the size and stature of Craig sitting next to me. So I'm not sure how that translates to people of a bigger size. But um, it was crinkle fry. <laughs> it was plenty for me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no, that was, that was a perfect helping of it. I, I go to Zaxby's, essentially, only to get the crinkle cut fries. It's fun to have the different types of fries. You know, sometimes you want your shoestrings. Sometimes you want your crinkles. Well, and when you go to Bayline Diner, I think you want the crinkles because, mm. um, I, all right, so this is weird, but I whenever I have crinkle cut fries, I think of when I was being, you know, my babysitter used to make them for me back in the day so granted back in the day wasn't the 50s and 60s but still whatever it makes me nostalgic it was just like she's really a dorian gray here she did a picture <laughs> of herself so it was the 40s <laughs> it just makes me feel nostalgic 1840s. so 1840s and i love these fries they're so good it's nice that you get you can get that sort of a um you know childhood like throwback from mm-hmm. that sort of a thing I, I always love when you when you can find something in a theme park that you associate that way yeah like it, it just makes it n- and it adds to that feeling of the hotel anyways that 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 place so yeah that's cool any other comments on that oh i also i looked it up it was sun-dried tomato aioli so not just your standard aioli it was sun-dried tomatoes it was good folks so rhino let's move on to you you had the cajun chicken sandwich yes yes Oh, I, th- I thought you were going to show a picture of it. <laughs> oh, there it is. Hey. hey. Um, so, okay. So, overall, it was a good chicken sandwich. It was it was made fresh to order. I, th- I think I got it at the same section that JL got her burger at, Ooh, so it which they made our stuff right it. away. Um, I don't th- think they should call this a Cajun chicken sandwich, though, because there was no heat to that Cajun sauce. Like, I couldn't taste anything. It was just kind of like an orange mayonnaise. But, mm. but it's got um, the pepper jack cheese on it, which helps a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and that helped a little bit for sure. Um, I also think the person made it wrong. They put it on the wrong bread because it was supposed to be on a focaccia roll, but that's just like, I think that's just the the um, uh, cheeseburger. like Yeah, just the bun. standard yeah. Kaiser roll. Yeah, and, and it wasn't toasted. So the, the chicken was so good, like so well made. Um the word here i will not say and um moist and uh you thought it was moist uh but it it <laughs> soaked the bun because it wasn't toasted so that was my only issue so you kind of like had to you as you're getting through it started coming apart a little bit but i would totally give this one another chance because i it it, it like i said it was made fresh it was a good piece of chicken um i'm with jl i like the crinkle fries i like my variety of french fries um i just wish there was something i could have added to it to give it that heat i was kind of like mentally expecting but yeah no it's always a shame whenever you order something that's supposed to be spicy and then it yeah just doesn't end up that way i know i get kind of irked about that too so uh then i wanted to close out with the food options uh with the in my opinion the best thing you could ever get there anymore uh and that's what jackie had jackie our community admin i don't know what exactly her uh, title is she's got a long title she's (laughs) our our newest member of the diz team jackie was there with us that weekend and she went off my recommendation and ordered the classic tuna noodle casserole of cabana bay uh so it looks so good this tuna noodle casserole i growing up i used to hate tuna noodle casserole and i'm sure i've told this story on the show before so i apologize you're gonna have to grin and bear with it but i i always hated it growing up i never really liked the idea of canned tuna uh i know that i i think from my memory i've might have been hit in the head too many times but i'm pretty sure i always with a can of tuna with, with a can of tuna i'm cut too i imagine <laughs> i'm pretty sure i made my mom uh pack my lunch on tuna noodle casserole day because i wasn't gonna eat it uh so then suddenly i had this and i had to try it because everyone was raving about it whenever this hotel first opened up and it just set my world on fire 
in terms of my, my delicatessen oh, world. Man. It is essentially just pasta with cheese, a lot of cheese. I'm talking in a dish that they make, they probably melted two bricks of cheese, if, wow. if that it might be more and then there is a good helping of tuna in there so you still get that flavor uh classic style with peas then they serve it with a breadstick and also uh a parmesan cheese on top if you didn't already have enough cheese you don't it, to describe how good <laughs> this tuna noodle casserole is is just it, it's beyond me in words first off the portion size is so large i mm. eat it in one portion this also is another thing that has contributed to my current status <laughs> of weight is that i was eating these things in one portion i would easily say based on making it trying to replicate it at home and looking at the health stats you're probably eating the equivalent of four portions oh. if you're just making it for yourself at home and that's it's unhealthy to begin with so then you're eating four times that so you can only imagine uh and they they will if it's a fresh batch that they just opened up and ready to serve they'll give you extra because it's a fresh there batch is nothing i want more in and, my life and then this second in time is to be eating that picture and if it is at the end of the dish and it's got that nice crispy part all around the edge then they will make sure if, if it even looks like you might be able to get a portion and a half out of it instead of just being cheap and saying oh we'll put the next we'll put this with the next one and serve it first they just fill up your portion even bigger they are very generous with this stuff i uh, it should be for people who love this dish or just comfort food it should be like their mecca they need to go out <laughs> of their way to travel to bayliner diner and get some tuna noodle casserole it is my favorite dish they have there now unfortunately my second favorite dish which used to be well my favorite dish that is no longer there was the swedish meatballs bless you bless you sir uh it was the swedish meatballs which were like six huge meatballs served over mashed potatoes mm. with broccoli and gravy and it's so unhealthy again but no oh, bless you it's gonna be okay sir uh and it's just they they took that off and replaced it with this beef uh beef stew in a bread bowl and that's mm -hmm. good but it's just not swedish meatballs that's also like that's your ikea 50 60s comfort food uh, and god i uh, can we end this i'm hungry well i was <laughs> yeah, before let, we do i, I was gonna say you were talking Go about ahead. the portion size and um you know i had my stay was at cabana bay during the universal land sea which is coming up anyway. So I've had quite a few meals at Bayliner Diner at this point. Um, one of the ones that I thought was um, good, they have a, a, a dinner entree, the lemon chicken. Oh. And um, it, it was good. It was very lemony, though. So everyone out there, if you don't like lemon, you do not want to get this. It, it wasn't a hint of lemon. It was lemon chicken. Um, but the portion size of everything was so huge that I actually had to take some of it back to my room. But if you are staying at Bayliner Diner and you have one of the suites, you have that little... Staying at Commander Bay? Oh, uh, yeah. That's yeah. what I uh, meant. I, was, I, I just imagined you in a tent in the, in the diner being like... Well, that tuna tent, I think please. that Craig would stay in a tent just yes. for that tuna casserole. Um, anyway, if you're staying in one of the suites... Sex on a plate. Comes with the kitchenette, with the, the little mini fridge and the microwave. You actually can take leftovers from your meals back to your room to eat at a later time and you, yep. you know you've got all the plates and the again plastic <laughs> I've done that before plastic <laughs> knives and everything else in your room so you know it's cool it works out and sometimes you can make one meal stretch into two or a meal and a snack and sometimes you can just bring a second meal for whenever you know you're inevitably going to be hungry minutes That's later <laughs> uh second meal definitely done that second sometimes meal. thirds who knows there's a lot so I'm gonna. We're gonna do this one. I forget how we did it on the dining reviews before. That's my bad. But oh, I, based on, I, I sorry, Dustin, too. Dustin West. I ate something as well. <laughs> yeah, that oh is my true. Gosh, wow. I completely skipped. I am so sorry, wow. Dustin. It's okay. I don't have much to say about it anyway. <laughs> no, go ahead. Yours is very important because it's probably now yeah. my second favorite food it option is. there. You know, it was pretty good. I had the uh, brisket. Um, oh yeah. The br yeah. beef brisket grilled cheese yeah and it's exactly what you expect it to be it's a grilled cheese sandwich with beef brisket in it is really good and their homemade potato chips was an option i could have had the the noodle salad the pasta salad oh. and uh, i went with the chips and they were really really yeah. good go for this it's exactly what you expect and it's really good 
Yeah, and another plus, I've had this uh, since we did that. Uh, judging by the picture of Dustin's and seeing it and trying a bite of his while we were there, and then when I got it, they are really good at making grilled cheeses. Yeah. Grilled cheeses at, uh, at Cabana Bay at the Bayliner Diner because both times they were not burnt at all. They were just that nice golden brown that you want mm-hmm. from it, and nothing can ruin a day more than a bad burnt grilled cheese. And this is definitely – I mean, yeah – that's that's where I'm gonna wrap this all up in a way because, uh, in my opinion, from it, from Bayliner Diner is, I would overall call this a very good option. Yeah, it's definitely not the finest dining. It's my personal favorite dining. I think at all the hotels and maybe even the resort. I know it wow, flip flops around. A big I love that tuna noodle casserole. I love that <laughs> comfort food. Well, I'll tell you one thing right now. It beats any of the other Disney uh, food courts. Oh yeah, yes. like at the Disney Absolutely. resorts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's not an intimidating dining experience. Yeah. It's just you go there on your own. For the yeah, I go. I go and I do the short-term parking there and Mm -hmm. i walk in and i get food and i take it out to go that's how much i love this place uh the only reason i say it's good and not great is because up until this experience and then ones of late i've never had i never had an issue with them in terms i was getting every single meal served flawlessly every time the people who work there are extremely friendly and that still stands to this day but sometimes the food is a little more wavering and to be a great restaurant it needs to be served on par it needs to be served on par every single time and maybe i've just been there on bad times but i don't want to tell someone that this is going to be great every single time whenever it hasn't been for me so i'll say good very good right in that range uh i go out of my way to do it i would recommend to what do you guys think I think going to that hotel, if you're not staying there, I think it would just be cool just to go in and walk around. You can go upstairs and bowl for a little bit and then go have lunch. Like, it's a nice experience. Yeah. I think I'm going to go and pick up my kids and go eat at Bailey's. Yeah, I, for real. Um, <laughs> it's not my favorite um, place to eat at Cabana Bay, but it is a great place yep. to eat at Cabana Bay. No, oh, I, I agree with that. Dustin. I, I disagree, but I agree. Uh, again, I said that I think this is the best food court that I've ever eaten at in terms of whether it be Universal or Disney uh, hotels, and I'm going to stick to that. I think it's good, and I think it's the best food court I've ever been to, so that that should tell you something right there. That is high praise. Uh, so definitely check it out. We will, uh, of course, have all those pictures of our food uh, up on our show notes page, disunplug.com, for this week's show notes. And as I mentioned before, without a date, uh, this all is culminating. This was one of our first meals. Actually, it was our first meal as part of our Universal Land Sea. Yeah. So this is the first bit of material from it, and you will hear much more. You will hear and see it starting on July 6th. That's whenever we will be releasing all of that material. Five fun days of Universal Resorts and a Royal Caribbean cruise on the Enchantment of the Seas. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, all the Diz and Diz Unplugged channels out there, yeah, including the Universal us, uh, Edition. Fun comments on YouTube. Yep. Those are always welcome. Leave us comments on YouTube. We don't always take them well, and sometimes we get very bitter about it and uh, passive-aggressive. But <laughs> you know what? That's just the chance you take. Uh, I, I openly encourage it. If we can't tease each other, what can we do in life? Yes. Uh, just get along, I guess. So <laughs> I was going to say love. Yep. Make sure you uh, subscribe to us on iTunes as well as YouTube. Uh, if you're not subscribed to us already on there, leave us comments, ratings, reviews. All of that stuff. We love your feedback. We appreciate everything you do for us. And on that note, that is going to do it with this edition of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Dustin, cue that music. We will see you next time with another episode. But until then, shut the flip up is universal. <laughs> see you, everyone.